Three of the instruments are controlled by changes in air pressure in the pitot-static system. These are the altimeter, vertical speed indicator, and air speed indicator. The static port on the side of the fuselage provides air pressure for the altimeter and vertical speed indicator. The air speed indicator also reads air pressure from the static port, as well as impact pressure from the pitot tube pointed forward on the aircraft. As an aircraft increases airspeed, impact pressure in the pitot tube increases while static pressure remains the same. The larger difference is shown as an increase on the airspeed indicator. After takeoff, as the aircraft climbs into thinner air, the lower pressure in the static port reads as an increase in altitude. If the static port becomes blocked in flight, the pressure inside the static system is trapped and cannot change with altitude changes. Initially, there won't be any effect on any of the three instruments until a change in altitude is made. The altimeter will be frozen while the VSI will read zero. The increased pressure in the pitot system will cause the airspeed indicator to read inaccurately higher. A blockage in the pitot tube will only affect the airspeed indicator as this is the only instrument fed by this system. A loss of ram air pressure from a blockage in the front will cause the pressure in both the pitot and static system to be equal, causing the airspeed indicator to read zero though the altimeter and the VSI will continue to function normally. The altimeter determines altitude by comparing outside air pressure to known sea level pressure, so it displays altitude above mean sea level. The aircraft's altitude in MSL is called its true altitude. Prior to takeoff, the altimeter is set to a nearby reported sea level pressure. The altimeter should then correctly read the field elevation of the takeoff airport. Here in Maryland, it's around 100 feet. Changing the altimeter setting from its original 29.92 to the reported pressure of 30.00 causes an increase in the altitude indicated. An increase of 0.1 inches of mercury causes about a 100 foot increase in indicated altitude. When the aircraft climbs, the indication of altitude above sea level or true altitude increases. Note though that it gives no indication of actual height above the ground or absolute altitude. This has to be determined by the pilot by comparing the indicated altitude to known terrain elevation. As we fly inland over higher elevation areas, the altitude indication won't change while our absolute altitude drops to 5,000 feet above a place like Kansas City. If the altimeter is set to the standard pressure of 29.92, it'll read pressure altitude. In this example, setting it from 30.00 to 29.92 causes the indication to fall to 5,920 feet. This is the pressure altitude for this flight used in performance calculations that we see in chapter 5 of the course. Now density altitude takes that pressure altitude and adjusts it again for changes in temperature. At standard temperature density altitude is equal to pressure altitude. As temperature changes though air density changes and this is what density altitude is used to indicate. So a rise in temperatures to say three degrees above standard causes an increase in density altitude, in this case to 6,280 feet. Notice though that even though pressure and density altitude have changed, the indicated altitude is still 6,000 feet as we see when we set the altimeter back to the correct sea level pressure of 30.00. Because pressure changes over the course of a flight, the altimeter will read incorrectly if it's not periodically updated. Flying from an area of low pressure to high pressure causes the altimeter to indicate lower than the true altitude. The pilot needs to adjust the altimeter to a nearby reported sea level pressure obtained from air traffic control or a weather report. Because temperature affects air density, the altimeter is also affected by temperatures warmer or colder than standard. Flying from warm to cold air causes the altimeter to read higher than true altitude. The pilot may descend to correct for what is incorrectly shown as a higher altitude, putting that aircraft closer to terrain. The memory aid for this, for navigating with the altimeter, whether flying from different areas of pressure or temperature, is going from high to low, look out below.